Jesse Leon McCann, illustrated by Jason Frucher, read by Heather Engler. Chapter One, Sparks Fly. James Isaac Neutron, did you take the spark plugs from the car again? Jimmy's mom, Judy, shouted. Jump in Jupiter, mom, Jimmy said. I just remembered that my science project is due today. I need the plugs for my electro orbital yo-yo, he added, smiling. It's sure to get the best grade in class. How many times do I have to tell you? Auto parts are to stay in the auto, Jimmy's mom scolded. Hand them over, mister. You can't break the rules just because you waited until the last moment. Jimmy gave up the plugs. His robot dog, Goddard, thought they smelled mighty tasty. Jimmy's dad, Hugh, stepped outside as Jimmy ran for the bus. Boys will be boys, he tried to explain to his wife. That is, unless they're men or babies. Meanwhile, Goddard was helping himself to a spark plug breakfast. Chapter 2. Science is Golden Tough luck, Jimmy, Carl said. Now you don't have a science project. Not to worry, Carl, Jimmy replied. I'll present one of my other inventions instead. He pulled out his super growth serum and his self-popping popcorn. Look at my invention, Jimmy, Carl said when they had reached school. It's a non-returning boomerang. Jimmy looked puzzled. Gee, Carl, that looks like an ordinary stick. That's the way I designed it, Carl beamed. Hey, Neutron, someone called. It was Nick, the most popular boy in school riding a skateboard. These turbo wheels you invented make my board super kickin', Nick said. Thanks for letting me have them. I said you could borrow them, Jimmy pointed out. What's your science project, Nick? Carl asked, changing the subject. These turbo wheels Jimmy invented, said Nick as he winked and rode off again. Jimmy's friend Sheen ran up. Prepare to be impressed, amazed, and stunned. Ta-da! Presenting my Ultra Lord Sprout Buddy, Sheen exclaimed. He even grows his own ultra hair. Sheen's invention was a clay statue of Ultra Lord, his favorite superhero with grass growing on its head. I'll get an A plus for sure, Sheen said. Me too, said Carl. I'm not sure which of my projects to choose. Either, either could get the highest grade, Jimmy said confidently. Think again, Nerdtron, said a voice that made Jimmy cringe. It could only be Cindy Vortex. Miss Fowl would like my project best, Cindy boasted. Chapter 3, Cindy's Monsters. The boys gasped. Cindy was carrying a box of monsters. This is my flatworm habitat, Cindy said. This special lens magnifies the view, making it possible to observe the worms in their habitat. See, Cindy explained. Jimmy had to admit, Cindy's project was pretty impressive, but he wouldn't tell her that, of course. Cindy's too cool for school, huh, Jimmy? Said Cindy's best friend, Libby. In her own mind, Jimmy said, smirking. But Jimmy was worried. What if Miss Fowl liked Cindy's project best? He wasn't really sure either of his inventions could get the best grade. I've got to guarantee that I get the best grade, Jimmy thought. Cindy Snortex won't beat me. Chapter four, spills and pops. All right, class, from this point on, no tinkering with any of the projects, their teacher, Miss Fowl, began. This class has been known to have uh, mishaps from students trying to outdo each other. Suddenly, Jimmy had an idea. I know, I'll secretly add a little super growth serum to my popcorn. It's sneaky, but I'll beat Cindy for sure. Meanwhile, Carl was called to the front of the room to do his presentation. For years, he began, Australians have been throwing crooked sticks and hitting themselves on the head. 
Cindy eyed Jimmy. No fair, Neutron, she whispered angrily. You heard Miss Fowl. It's too late to make changes. Sometimes giving themselves huge, ugly lumps, Carl continued. Jimmy ignored Cindy and began to pour a few drops of the growth serum on the popcorn kernels. Just then, Cindy yanked on Jimmy's shirt. Jimmy's super growth serum spilled all over his popcorn and onto the floor. The popcorn kernels started growing and growing and growing. Then the huge kernels started popping. Zing, zing, pop, pop, pop. Chapter five, Avalanche. Beachside sized popcorn exploded around the classroom. Cindy jumped back, landed on Nick's turbo skateboard, and went flying. She slammed into Carl, which caused the non-returning boomerang to fly out of his hand. The stick hit Cindy's flatworm habitat, which broke into a thousand pieces. Crash! Jimmy dove to catch the flatworms, but he wasn't fast enough. To his horror, the little worms landed in the puddle of super growth serum. The flatworm started growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Soon, the worms were as big as cars. Before long, the giant flatworms swarmed through the school, knocking holes in floors and ceilings. An avalanche of popcorn trapped Jimmy and Libby. Chapter six, mom and dad to the rescue. If only Cindy, Cindy hadn't made me spill my super growth serum, Jimmy's mind was racing. He had to do something. Then, brain blast, he exclaimed. Libby, can I use your cell phone, he asked. If you can reach it, Libby grunted, plus pay any roaming fees. Jimmy snagged Libby's phone and dialed. Hi, mom, he said. Oh, everything's swell. Can you do me a favor? Jimmy then asked his parents to bring his super shrinking serum to school, but the car wouldn't stop. Burp. Goddard, did you eat those spark plugs? demanded Judy. Burp. The robot dog replied. Jimmy's parents thought quickly. Where there's a will, there's a way, popped Hugh. That is, unless it's a boy named Will, or a man, or a baby. Jimmy's parents arrived just in time. They shrunk the worms down to normal size. Jimmy and Libby were rescued. The school was saved. While the school was being repaired, Miss Fowl, ga Fowl gathered her class on the lawn. Since the Ultra Lord Sprout Buddy was the only project that survived, she got the highest grade. Puke and Pluto, Jimmy sighed. James Isaac Neutron, Jimmy's mom whispered, don't you have something to say to the class? Jimmy nodded shyly. This whole thing is my fault, he admitted. I shouldn't have broken the rules just to win. I'm sorry. Later, the Neutrons were back home, safe and sound. Jim, Jimmy, James, Jimbo, said Hugh, you've learned a valuable lesson today. You bet, Dad, Jimmy agreed. No more breaking the rules, and I'm starting my next project today. After all, he said wisely, it's the early bird who catches the worm. The end. Have a good day.